This is the newsroom. This is the newsroom for today, Tuesday, August 27, 2019. We're broadcasting to you on E1 and Scar TV in Georgetown and Tarzi TV in Bartica. In the headlines, the Australian of Ghana Elections Commission just retired. Hobson has decided to end the ongoing house to house registration exercise. What the Commission Chairman pronounces has to be seen as the decision of the Commission. A single father who walked away from an unhealthy relationship has a message for men who abuse their partners. If I'm to harm her, what will I gain from that? 96 school drop-offs get a second chance and four Ghana Amazon Warriors and Anders to the lift team fight their camp to begin on Friday. With the news, I'm Afanash Ramzan. Thanks for joining us. We start off by telling you that the chairman of the Ghana Elections Commission, GCOM, Justice Retired, Claudette Singh, on Tuesday made a unilateral decision to end the ongoing house-to-house -house registration exercise. Bibi Katoon reports. The opposition People's Progressive Party has argued that the only thing hindering hold of general and regional elections is the ongoing house-to-house -house registration exercise. On Tuesday, chairman of the Ghana Elections Commission, Justice Retired, Claudette Singh, declared that the process must be brought to an end on August 31st. She also said that the entire gather during the exercise will be merged with the existing National Register of Registrants database, which is used to create a list of electors. However, PPB commissioners still see this as a way to delay holding the elections until the merging of the data will be a prolonged process. Maintain that the information that is contained in uh, the house house process is unverified data and consequently should not be used. But as um, it is left to be seen, we material to this data. We have said that any merging Has to be or verification of the data by using house to house information is wrong. It will take a long time and that it will contaminate the NRR. It will because it will result based on 285,000 persons on the category A who have been just registered, that they will appear as duplicates. And having appeared as duplicates, since they are already in the NRR, each one of those will have to be investigated. Government Commissioner President Alexander also opened the reports following the meeting on Tuesday. Alexander has been leaning on the registration exercise the electors said the decision was taken after listening to all of the arguments. So, what the commission chairman pronounces has to be seen as the decision of the commission. So, we so believe it's a matter to kill the list. So, how long it will start citing the need? Obviously, it's not the perfect method that we have been working towards. It obviously, it's also not the abandonment of the we working towards. The chairman will be signed order to change the issue to October 20 for the ending of the House Reservation Exercise to August 31st. The Commission will then go to an extensive claims and objections exercise before extracting the preliminary list of electors. The Commission will continue to further deliberate on other matters of importance for the holding of general and regional elections with only the shortest possible time, she said in a statement. The Commission last weekend began training for polling this time. Reporting for the newsroom. A single father, Andy Shepard, has a message for the men who abuse their partners. He recently sat in with the newsroom and spoke of his personal experience in an unhealthy relationship and how he was able to move on. It's not a patwa has a story. On May 14 this year, a 37-year-old mother of five remains were found in a shallow grave in West Bank, Demerara. Fifteen years prior to that, Salah Surim, her husband, Ryan, everything was normal until he started abusing her. Zala suffered for years and the abuse ended tragically after her husband shot her in the head, burned her body, and then buried her. 
It was this shocking tragedy that made a single father and a businessman start campaign against domestic violence. 40-year-old Rand Shepard told a newsroom during an interview that he had experiences where he harbored thoughts of harming his partner, but soon realized that being abusive does not fix or help anything or anyone. The campaign, Stand Up, Speak Up, Stop Domestic Violence, We Will Few, is quickly becoming popular among communities across Guyana. Randy and his four year olds have been doing outreaches in London, Essequibo, Burpees, and around Georgetown to educate people about the harms of domestic violence for the past months. I was in a relationship with a young woman, um, and uh, I practically think I was doing everything that I supposed to do as a man that is right. And um, she was unfaithful, you know, and as a man, I think. I've invested so much into our relationship and I keep telling myself what she's doing is not right and there are many times I, I get up in the middle of the night and I'm standing over her and I'm saying, you know, this is not right. She shouldn't be doing these things to you. I have about three experiences with that. But in the midst of that reality struck, I ask myself, I said, if I'm to harm her, what will I gain from that? And it was nothing because it's either I got to keep running for the rest of my life or I'd be locked away in prison. So I just decided to move on, take my clothes, leave everything else behind and start life all over again. Randy is pleading with men to think about the consequences and have the strength to walk away from unhealthy relationships like he did. He knows that it will not be easy. We're losing too many of our women. To domestic violence. Too many. I had the experience of talking with a lot of women. I had experiences where women take off their bra, one lady and show me her breasts, her husband beaten off both of her nipples. I had experiences where women reached out to me, a woman showed me her vagina, where her husband literally piped off a piece of it. Those are the things I see with my eyes. I saw those things with my eyes. And within the past six or seven days, there were two women that was killed. One of them had eight kids. One had three. Since Zyla's tragic death, a number of other women were killed by their partners. And more recently, within the space of a week, Two East Coast Demerara women were murdered by the ex-husbands. I visited the home of the young woman that was killed on the East Coast. I walk into the house and I'm sitting opposite the room that she was murdered by a man who she trusts, a man who's supposed to love her, a man who's supposed to care for her. Her, her three kids witnessed that. They saw her the mother lying there in blood. It was a little three-year-old boy he's there. He's just crying for his mother. Little do we know that he will never see her again. Randy believes that men should be raised to talk about their feelings and maybe the scorch that domestic violence will not be so prevalent. For the women, he believes there is need for more empowerment so that they see there is a life beyond an abused relationship. We as men, we were taught that it's wrong for a man to be emotional, a man should cry, a man should do this, a man should hug another man. Come on in. Parents don't teach your children that is wrong. It's totally wrong. It's totally wrong because what happened? A man bile up all of that emotion inside of him. And then when it reaches the top of his head, the only way he knows to lash out is physically and in violence. Meanwhile, first place Sandra Granger in 2018 said in her address at the UK's fourth national action plan on women, peace and security, there has been an increase in reported incidents of the mental violence by an intimate partner from 74.8% in 12. 18% in 2017, with females accounted for 80% of the victims. Report to newsroom, Sentinel Papo. When the newsroom returns, 90 school dropouts get a second chance, and the National Broadcasting Authority will allow citizens to monitor radio and TV content. Stay tuned.
this is true. With the knowledge expected shortly and with an increase in broadcast agencies, the Ghana National Broadcasting Authority, the GNEA, will be a citizen's monitoring program. That will allow you, the viewers and listeners, the opportunity to report to Broadcasting Authority any infractions heard on radio and television stations from next month. Bigotun tells more. With an increase in licensing radio and television stations, the Canada National Broadcasting Authority, GNEA, says there is a need for monitoring. Stakeholders engaged with the morning at the Arbitrum Conference Center, GNE board member Dr. Robin Doda noted that someone over 18 years can assist. The following day, the most direct I can say, how can you allow this to happen on radio? Uh, how can you uh, show that on TV? So now we're giving them a voice, basically. And it's going to be a phased program. Dr. Doda said the program will be rolled out from September. Chairman of the GNEA, Leslie Sober, was pointed out that with another cycle of general and regional elections expected shortly, there should be balanced broadcast of issues. He said the agency will be partnering with the Relations Commission and the Ghana Elections Commission's media monitoring unit to address the area of sensitive content. Our country will be moving into a period that has its own excitement. And during this time, it ends that there should be no misuse of the area. He assured that defiance and violations will be treated appropriately. As it relates to live broadcast, the chairman said systems must be put in place to edit certain remarks. The authorities also consider the issuance of directives to broadcasters to assist with compliance. We be newsroom. 96 youth on Tuesday graduated from the Sophia Training Center Youth Entrepreneurial Skills Training Program. The program offers a second chance to school dropouts between ages 16 and 25. Isnala Patwa reports. The six months program offers skills training in catering, data operation, medicine, plumbing, refrigeration, air conditioning, welding, and fabrication. Graduation ceremony on Tuesday at the National Cultural Center, Minister of Social Cohesion Dr. George Norton said the programs are designed to empower school dropouts to either start their own business or gain employment. Today we celebrate the beginning of a new prosperous journey for 96 young people. Over the past six months, the staff of the Fire Training Center has been working with you to develop important skills that can help you to transform your lives. When the kids are training officers are trying to train, the youth benefited from silence, daily meals, and educational tours. The program offers continuous educational achievements to the end of school, unskilled, unemployed youth with technical educational skills and all life skills for personal and national development in a desperate environment. The overall best graduating journey was as I nice. He encouraged his peers, noting that there can never be success without hard work. The time spent at the supply chain is spent longer than its duration. We endured many challenging times. Be, being here today has proven the good offer. The harder the battle, the sweeter the victory. Despite our struggles, they were exciting and rewarding moments that we forever remembered. Students were also awarded for dancing, cooperation, skill and entrepreneurship, English language and mathematics. Trainees from each program also had their works on display at the ceremony who were encouraged to develop their trade and continuously upgrade their skills. Reporting for Newsroom, Isnel Pato. And the Ghana National Broadcasting Authority, GNBA, and the Telecommunications Agency in place signed a memorandum of understanding of the spectrum of broadcasting fees and both be to the GNBA from January 2020. It's going to place that the GNBA's fourth engagement with owners of broadcasting agencies at the Arthur's Conference Center. 
chairman of the GNBA, Leslie Sowers, signed the agreement on behalf of GNBA, while on Griffith, director of the telecoms agency, signed on behalf of that agency. Sowers explained that currently spectrum fees are being paid to the telecoms agency, while the broadcasting fees are being paid to the GNBA. This has caused some complaints from broadcasters who described the process as troublesome. Meanwhile, from January 2020, Casting licenses will be issued only after payments are made. You to discharge casters to ensure that they put systems in place to facilitate persons with disabilities, especially those with hearing impairment. This can be done either with traditional sign language or major programs or closed captioning. So it's all called for more local content to be aired on television and radio stations. Just ahead on newsroom, the financial weather and bridge reports with headlines from the region and around the world. Stay tuned.
Now, news room for Isahane has news from the Caribbean and the wrong bird. Thank you, Avinash. We will start off with news from the region. The Brazilian government has said it will reject an offer of aid from G7 countries to help cut the fires in the Amazon rainforest. French President Emmanuel Macron, who hosts a G7 summit that ended on Monday, said 22 million US dollars would be released. But Brazilian ministers say the money is not needed and accuse foreign powers of wanting control of the Amazon, the BBC reported. Satellite data shows fires from mostly in the Amazon region are burning at record levels. Commenting on the G7 offer of aid, Brazilian President Jair Bolsonaro's chief of staff said the resources are more relevant to reforest Europe. Mr. Bolsonaro has previously said his government lacks the resources to fight the record number of fires in the Amazon region, facing mounting pressures from abroad. President Bolsonaro authorized the military to help tackle the disease. Brazil says 44,000 soldiers have been deployed to combat the fires. And environmental crimes in the Amazon and military operations are on the way in seven states as the result of requests for assistance from local governments. Labor Minister of the Bahamas, Dion Folk, says he has referred the strike by doctors to the Industrial Tribunal, saying the dispute has affected and threatened the public interests. Folk said the move is in accordance with the Industrial Relations Act. CMC reported that under the legislation, once the matter is referred to the tribunal, it is the duty of any person participating in the strike or lockout to discontinue the same forthwith until the panel makes a ruling. Last week, the Public Hospitals Authority said it had reduced its services to emergencies only, adding it deeply regrets the impact of this action on the provision of care to the people of the Bahamas. The Bahamas Doctors Union said its members have not been paid for working on holidays and have also expressed concern over receiving contracts of no more than three years from the authority. The union said that this places doctors at a disadvantage because it often gives the impression that they do not have stable employment. Prime Minister of Barbados, Mia Motley, on Tuesday gave the all clear for the reopening of the island as a slightly weakened tropical storm Dorian made its way through the Lesser Antilles on Monday night. Simply reported that she told Barbadians that they should recognize that there will be other countries in the region that may be affected by the storm. Acting Tourism Minister of Barbados, Kirk Comfrey, said that the island's loan is not Airport, the Grantly Adams International Airport, has been reopened, and there were no immediate reports of any damage to the tourism infrastructure. Barbados relies heavily on the sector for its foreign exchange and revenue. The Miami based National Hurricane Center said that the tropical storm Dorian was moving through the Windward Islands, Dominica, Grenada, St. Lucia, and St. Vincent and the Grenadines, with tropical storm force winds. On the international scene, at least a dozen women who accuse financier Jeffrey Epstein of sex abuse are speaking out before his criminal case is dismissed following his death. The BBC reported that a hearing in New York has been scheduled to give the alleged victims the chance to address the court. A coroner ruled Epstein killed himself this month while awaiting trial on sex trafficking and conspiracy charges. Prosecutors say the investigation into Epstein is ongoing and charges could be brought against any co-conspirators. The tycoon was found unresponsive in his prison cell on August 10th. The FBI and Justice Department are investigating the incident to determine if there was any foul play. Epstein was accused of paying girls under the age of 18 to perform sex acts at his Manhattan and Florida mansion between 2002 and 2005. He was also alleged to have paid large amounts of money to two potential witnesses ahead of his trial, which was scheduled for the next year. Courtney Wilde, who has alleged Epstein sexually abused her when she was 14, told the court she feels very angry and sad. She said Epstein was a coward who was able to manipulate the justice system. Virginia Roberts, who was also among the plaintiffs in court on Tuesday, had accused Epstein of keeping her as a sex slave when she was a teenager. Women in Bangladesh are no longer required to declare if they are virgins on marriage registration forms. The country's top court has ruled. The high court ordered that virgin be replaced with unmarried. The other two options on form will and divorce remain unchanged. BBC reported that women's rights groups who had argued the word virgin was humiliating welcomed Sunday's verdict. Separately, the court said grooms now 
also must declare their marital status. Marriage laws in Muslim-majority Bangladesh have been criticized by women's rights groups as restrictive and discriminatory. Many girls in the country are forced into arranged marriages at a very young age. Baby African elephants will no longer be taken from the wild and sold to zoos after a near total ban on their trade was approved on Tuesday. The Convention on International Trade in Endangered Species decided to tighten the rules after days of debate. BBC reported that the European Union decided to back the ban late in the day despite concerns and the move passed by 87 votes to 29. But Zimbabwe, the main exporter, voted against, along with the United States. Zimbabwe and Botswana, which have healthier elephant populations than other African nations, have been permitted to export elephants to appropriate and acceptable destinations. Under that rule, the country has captured and exported more than 100 baby elephants to Chinese zoos since 2012, Humane Society. International says Tuesday's decision significantly strengthens the restrictions on the elephant trade. And that brings us to the end of regional and international headlines. Back to you, Avinash. Thank you, Frieza. Sport is on the other side of the break. Stay tuned. Back to news, not for look at what's happening in sport. We start off with some cricket news. 
Cricket West Indies Interim Selection Committee today named the 13-member squad for the second test match against India at Sabina Park in Jamaica. The match starts on Friday, August 30 and is part of the My Team 11 series sponsored by Suda and KEI. The Gangs Ronki Mohal has recovered from an ankle injury and is available for selection. He replaces the fast bowler Michael Cummins. The wicketkeeper Jamar Hamilton will remain with the squad while Shane Dowridge has returned to Barbados to continue his rehabilitation after being ruled out of the series with an ankle injury. West Indies lost the first match and 18 runs. And the Ghana Arms Warriors will begin the process to claiming a maiden Hero Caribbean Premier League title when a brief encampment commences on Friday in Guyana. The players will start assembling on Thursday with the hope of whipping themselves in shape for the September 4 to October 12 tournament. According to Cricket Operations Manager Rion King, five-day camp will focus first and foremost on fitness. There will also be game simulation exercises as well as a practice game against the Select 11 on September 3. While King noted that a longer camp would have been ideal, they had to settle for a short intense one given that players are still committed to other duties. The upshot to that is that players will head to Guyana with miles in their legs ready to hit the field. So folks, um, I guess in, in trade off, you know, obviously long camp will allow the you know, players from different territories, different islands, different teams, different countries, you know, accommodation coming from different um, weather, weather conditions, stuff like that. You know, giving them a feel of, of the, the surface the province or the Korean. You know, you want that time, but that is just, you know, you know, these guys are pretty much sea professionals, you know, playing in Canada, uh, Pakistan, have camps, you know, normal teams do this stuff, so, you know, they can come here, not real rusty, but with some cricket under their, under their belt. In reflecting on the six seasons of the Hero CPL, playing for Guyana and West Indies fast baseball, that's what would be key for the Warriors to break that title drought. The South American-based franchise has been to the four times, finishing second best on every occasion. The wicket has improved tremendously in the six years. That's the one thing that, that you know, we started with, with very low slope decks, you know, one to give you a give. You, give, you, give you. So I think um, the decks had probably a lot of um, I think Guyana, unfortunately, had been defense four times and, and never crossed the line. Um, and it, it, it tells you that it's certainly not a skill or talent issue. I think guys um, would, would want to sit up and analyze their performances and their stuff. The main thing is the same with a few um, additions with, with, with the overseas players. So I think the core of the team uh, is still there. Um, I think Bank is there with regards to you know, Akan still, 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 still involved. And we have some of the there that started off, started when they were young, but now um, at, the, at the peak of the career. So, you know, I think sitting down and, and analyzing where we went wrong, I think it's more a mental issue. I think we need to address that and try and see what we can adjust our minds and adjust ourselves mentally to, to, to cross that line. While South African Johan Bolt and Danny's Rayon Griffith will remain in charge of coaching duties, and analyst Sarah Walker has been added to the technical team for the first time. A captain is yet named but it could be one of either Shoei Malik or Chris Green. The Warriors will begin their campaign with a three-match home leg at Providence. On Saturday 5, they take on St. Lucia's Zoo from 18 hours. Two days later, they face the St. Kitts Patriots from 20 hours, followed by a clash against Barbados Tridents on September 8, 17 hours. Reporting from Newsroom, I'm Afna Shamsan. In all all the Stephen Jacobs will make a return to Jamaica Towers for the second consecutive year in the Caribbean Premier League. It returns for its seventh edition from September 4. Akeem Green reached out to the Guyanese cricketer to get an insight into his readiness for the on-field action and the repetition he's building as an entertainment provider. In 2018, our spinning around played just three matches for the title of his, but was retained for a fee of US $5,000 for the 2019 season. But in those three outings, he got two wickets. He had a second basic economy rate for his team at 7.0. Missing one season 2015, James has taken 17 wickets at an economy rate of 6.9 and 27 CPL matches. For Jacobs, this season gives him a chance to fulfill a lifelong dream of playing for the senior West Indies team. T20 cricket is here to stay, and there's no age limit when it comes to T20 cricket. Right, so for me, it's about, you know, obviously staying fit and putting all the points out there, and hence, you know, 
in the team and the version right? because I see myself as a, a good utility player, especially when it comes to the short format. So I'm looking to put out some great performances this year and hence make the, the T20 team. But the first was Christopher Gale returning into his home franchise and fit under Russell in the squad. The top year box, the two time champion, to go full distance again. With those big names, we still have to put it together. Everyone needs to also play as a unit and then we can turn that into good performances. Right, but having said that, experience of Chris Gale and experience of someone like Andrew Russell, who we know are world renowned T20 players, I think we have a really good chance once we come together, as I said, as a unit and put that performances. I think we're going to win the title. Tell me something about the learning very well from people as they help improve your game. Um, somebody who I can mention, right? Two persons actually I can mention is Iman Wazim and Chris Green. I've seen, you know, I've seen him over well, I saw Chris Green last year, but I played with Iman last year for Jamaica Towers and I watched him over a number of years in the CPL. The way how they go out, um, you know, they work also, you know, they're bowlers that bowl in the power play. And I watch them, uh, you know, trying to show you key points, key areas in which I can add to my game to help my game improve. Having said that, I'm exposed to, you know, different coaches, you know, different tactics, you know, different strategies. So I try and feed off of that, you know, ask as much questions as possible and just try and implement it in my game. When the book of spent career spent time for the Dams and Warriors, the book of returned on the opposed and to take none for 29 and 4 overs in an 8 wicket triumph for Talos last season. For me, it's actually a point to prove, alright, because this is my home co country, right? And obviously, most persons will want to play for their home country, but uh, having set an opportunity to play for Jamaica Towers, I would also put my best foot forward and try to help Jamaica in, in, in winning the tournament, right? And like I said, a point to prove. And from last year, I haven't played at the stadium, all right? The, the you know, players that played me, right? They were up against me, I really want the, the past chance to see, all right? But I took up that chance that we actually won against the Army Warriors when we played them at the stadium, which was, you know, something good for me on a personal level because as a player coming back and playing against your own country, you don't want to also be put them up, all right? They're not selecting you, all right? So, I mean, there's emotions. You know, whenever I come out to play against um, um, Amazon Warriors, but I, I always try to put 100%, especially when I play against Warriors, because, like I said, I want to put them off field. They've been able to be a brand for itself, but you lend to life after cricket. I just don't want it to be Stephen Jacobs, the cricketer. All right, um, there's obviously life after cricket, right? So, I you know, I started. At, at a very early age, which I start establishing different small businesses, right? But my main business was obviously, obviously Jacobs Julian Pond. And I want to establish a brand around Stephen Jacobs. I see Chris Yale do it, I see Dwayne Bravo do it, right? You know, the, the, the big names. So I want to, you know, head myself in that in that direction. Right? And the party has been excellent for a number of years, right? And also will be excellent this year. Alright, it's on the 7th of September at Palm Court and it's on the 4th of September, 4th of October at Palm Court. You know, first get the opportunity to make some mingle with the with the stars at, on social level. You know, which most fans will obviously like. They come out, they get to see them, you know, they get to take pictures and whatnot. So that is something that I sat obviously playing, playing over and over years with the Warriors and I was headed into Palm Court. And seeing cricketers there in person, so I, I, you know, I figured that I could actually take it on a level. All right, and introducing some artists, like some famous soca artists. We have Orphan House, the guy who sings Oju, which is actually rocking right now. That that will be on the seventh, and then we have GBM Neutron, the Ben practice song, which everybody knows. We have Dwayne Bravo. We have a whole cast, right? So we want to make it a nice big celebration. TPL is the biggest party in sport, and, and we we will have the party. For the newsroom. Motor Racing News now, Director of Sport Christopher Jones has indicated that the Ghana Motor Racing Sports Club and the government are still ironing out issues as it relates to the expansion of the South Dakota circuit. In April 2018, officials from the International Automobile Foundation conducted a preliminary inspection to assess for the development needed to accommodate high level action such as Formula 4, a section of the circuit that is owned by the state. Listen to the Director of Sport. The Supreme Court approach, uh, I think we are coming to anchor in government with a view of expanding the track. 
assistance from government. We're still viewing it as well. So it's been noted since in the past is that motor racing, cars racing are about two of the major events that attracts a large contingent of people in the various countries. I know for sure in November when the motor racing hosts the international meet we have approximately 11 countries. This is exactly what we spoke about in terms of sport tourism because obviously when those countries come to participate in Ghana, their supporters, their fans and so equally, it will be enough effect. The hotel years will be able to benefit. The courses have their tourism packet will be able to benefit. So this is ideal. This is the sport tourism as we speak about. Actually, WJ Enterprise has stopped on board as a partner with the Petro Organization. The stage of fourth annual Lime Call for the Tournament, which kicks off on Saturday at the Ministry of Education ground on Carrefour Avenue. More in this report. On Tuesday, the co-director of the Petro Organization, Truman Dunstan, collected this bunch from accounts executive at WJ Enterprise, Avita Suku, thereby welcoming the company as a partner in the development of football. This bunch was done through the entity's proxy paper brand, and Mandonso was grateful for the support. We've been asking and seeking out corporate Guyana to invest the products in the sport, uh, in sports in general, more so in this case, uh, football. And, so, and I said before that a lot of companies will invest and they might not see the immediate results in terms of, um, in terms of uh, product sales or physical sales. But um, we want to assure them also that they're not only investing in their products but in uh, human lives. And I, I alluded to the fact only recently we have been involved uh, in school football from the 11 um, program right through to the 20. And one of those girls um, who started in our 11 tournament is now in the USA representing the country. And so these investments um, have to build future leaders. On behalf of the enterprise management, we are pleased to be associated with this year Lima Club Football Tournament organized by the organization. With WJ Enterprise recognize the stewardship of the Petro organization organizing football tournament and we and we see we are fit to support this activity to develop talents locally. Twelve teams will compete on the wrong robin knockout basis. If the match will run for one month, so the matches will be held at the Ministry of Education ground. The will be through the four with the top two and the best two thirty finishes progressing to four finals. As they will be four hundred thousand dollars for the winners. While second to fourth will pocket 200,000, 100,000, and 500,000. At the launch, Madonna chose to invite eight George Young teams. If the lack of football in the city, the initial aim of the tournament was to bridge the gap between elite league teams and first division clubs. The Force won the tournament last year when they defeated Port Royal 4 2. However, police were not part of the play this year due to their elevation to the Football Federation's elite league. Reporting for news. And with that, we've come to the end of the news for this evening. So of course, you find updates on these and other stories on our website, newsroom.gy, or our Facebook page, Newsroom Guyana. On behalf of the entire team here, I'm Avanash Ram, and thanks for watching. See you back here tomorrow.